In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the snapping options in the software. So first, we'll come to Edit and Snap Options, which you can also access by clicking F4 on the keyboard for your shortcut. And the first option we have here is Display Text at Cursor. Now, what does that actually do? Well, let's look at a practical example. So if you go over to the Draw Circle tool, you'll notice my mouse pointer or my cursor is giving me some information about the X and Y values of its current placement. Now, if I click and drag and draw my circle, it gives me radius information at my cursor. That is what the display text at cursor information does. It gives you information at the cursor, so it displays text at the cursor. So if I change the diameter, for example, it will give me the diameter information for this circle. Similarly, if I go to the Draw Polyline tool, you'll notice I get an L value for length and an A value for angle. So quite a handy tool to have on for your snap options. For now, let's go back into our Snap Options and let's look at some of the other options in here. So, we have Snap to Guides. Now, Snap to Guides is the use of guidelines and snapping to those. So, again, we'll look at a practical demonstration. We have a left-hand side ruler and a top side ruler. Let's click and drag from the top side ruler and we'll do it twice. And then we'll drag in a guideline from the left as well. Now, you can see this is actually quite useful for drawing in terms of if you wanted to make some precision drawings, guidelines can be really, really helpful. So let's look at how the snapping works. So let's go to the Draw Polyline tool, and you'll notice my cursor currently is displaying the Draw Polyline uh, cursor, but when I hover over the guideline, it gives me a different cursor to indicate that I'm going to be snapping to that guideline. You can see how my cursor snaps to the guideline, so I can pop my lines in where I want them to be accurately. So you can see how that is quite a useful tool. I'm just going to delete this vector because I don't need it at the moment. And I'm just going to temporarily turn off the guidelines and hide them by clicking in the top left here. And it hides our guidelines. And then what we can do is go to Edit, Snap Options. And you'll notice that also turns off the option in the menu. So if I turn them back on, they are now there. And we can also delete these. So if you right click a guide and choose Delete Guide, we can get rid of any guidelines that you no longer need. For now, let's go back into our Snap Options and we can have a look at some of the other options in the menu. So. We've got Snap Guides to Geometry. Now, this is to snap your guides to geometry on your worksheet. You'll notice if I turn this option off over here, it turns that one off automatically. We can turn that back on because we'll be coming back to this in just a moment. Now, the next option is to Snap to Grid. And what this does is you can see in the background here, a grid has appeared of dots. And the grid spacing field allows me to adjust the space between each of these dots. So if I just go ahead and click in here to change this to 0.5 instead, you'll notice how they were spaced out even further. And I can use these to actually snap to to do some drawing. So you can notice my cursor snapped to that point there. I can snap to this one and to this one. And you can see how it allows you to make some really accurate shapes. So I can do the same in here. I can snap to these points and it allows me to create some precision drawing. So a very useful option indeed. But let's go back into our snap options. And we have the option to snap to job center and corners, which is quite useful because if you need to snap to a corner or indeed into the middle of your job, you can do so with this option uh, checked and on. Now you'll notice we have the option to have a fixed nudge distance. So the fixed nudge distance is the distance that you can specify in here when you hold down control and shift and when you're moving something around in the worksheet you'll move in the fixed distances or nudges that are set over here. In fact let's look at a live example of that. So if I just click OK and click onto this circle I can hold control and shift and when I use my arrow keys that fixed nudge distance is taking effect here. So that value that we had entered in the snap options form is the fixed nudge distance that is taking place when I'm using my arrow keys with control and shift held down to move this object. So with that covered, let's go back into our snap options. Now the bottom of the left hand side of our options here, we have the snapping radius. Now what the snapping radius is referring to is how close the cursor must get to a vector or geometry in order for us to actually snap to it. So using the slider, if we slide this up, you can see a radius that is represented by a circle there that you can see getting larger as I move my slider to the right and it gets smaller as I move to the left. So you can see a representation of what that slider actually looks like. So depending on what this value is set to on the slider will determine 
the snapping radius. So in case of large, you have a much larger snapping radius, so potentially easy for you to snap to things. With smaller, far more precise. But I like mine around the middle, but I highly encourage you to play around with this setting to see what feels comfortable for you. Okay, so over to the right we have geometry snapping and we also have smart snapping. So let's start with our geometry snapping. Now you can see we've got a couple of different options here. So we've got object centers, which is the center of the object, span endpoints, span midpoints, arc centers, and intersections. So let's take a look at how that all works. Okay, so the first thing we're going to actually do though is turn off our snapping grid. An easy way to do that is to come to the top right here and toggle grid snapping on or off. So we can turn it to off and our grid is now removed. Okay, so let's go over to the polyline tool and you'll notice that when I put my cursor over the middle of this object, it gives me a target and it changes my cursor to a target because it's snapped to the center of that object. Same with this one and the same with this one. And you'll notice that when I go to the endpoints, it also gives me the cursor change to indicate that I'm at the end of that particular object. We also have uh, midpoints. So if you notice, I put my cursor over this object here and if I move it along when I get to the midpoint my cursor changes to indicate that I can snap to that and I can click on that to start drawing from. We also have arc midpoint so you'll notice if I put my mouse cursor over this arc I have a midpoint if I follow it around there's a midpoint over here if I follow it around again and again you notice there's midpoints. You can also have intersections so if I move this down just a little bit so there's two intersections over here if I go to my polyline tool again you'll notice that I can snap to an intersection and the cursor changes and of course here where the intersection is as well. It's quite a powerful tool because it allows you to make some really interesting vectors and drawings because you can snap to various areas of different objects. So I can go from the middle on this one to the top of this one to the edge of this one to the top of that one and back up here to make a shape. I can right click to exit the polyline tool and I can delete this vector is no longer needed and we can go back into our snap options to check what the rest of the options are. So you can see on the right here I've also got the option for smart snapping. So smart snapping is actually quite a powerful tool that enables us to snap to lines and extensions which don't necessarily exist as geometry and it allows us to create accurate vectors where we minimize the need to really create construction geometry. So we have various options here with which we can uh, play with our smart snapping. So we can snap to the object bounds, which is the bounds of the object, uh, the horizontal and vertical for an object, tangents for the object, so we can pick up on uh, tangent lines. It can also pick up on lines that are perpendicular to tangents as well from nodes and midpoints uh, and span geometry. And we also have the option to adjust the snap angle increments. Now, at the moment, I think 15 is actually quite fair in this case, but we could increase that if we wanted to and I'm actually quite happy with these settings at the moment so I'm going to click OK so we can look at some of these settings in action. So we're going to go to our polyline tool but before we do that I'm just going to move this circle down here just a little bit so you can see this in action. So we'll pop over to our polyline tool and you'll notice that when I hover the mouse point with smart snapping on over the bounds of this object you get this blue line. You notice this blue line, if I go around the object, highlights where the bounds of this object is. So you can see the square bound around this object, so you can indicate it by the blue line. Similarly, if I do this with the star, you'll notice when I hit the edge here of the other point, it gives me that bound line and the bottom and then the side. And then you can see from the top. Now you can also see we've got horizontal lines that we can snap to. We've got vertical lines that we can also snap to. So here you can see an example of a vertical line. and here you can see the horizontal. So really it's about moving your mouse cursor over the geometry so you can get these wake up points that you can snap to. So you can see how helpful it is in terms of the software locating areas that you can snap to so you can make more precision and accurate drawing elements. Now if it comes to our circle, you can see I can snap to the middle of it or go to the top or the edges. I'm gonna to pop to the top here and you'll notice I'm drawing a line and you'll see that I've got an A value which represents the angle. I can snap that angle in 15 degree increments because that's what we set in our snap options form. So it goes down to 75, 60, 45, and 30. So I'm going to pop my line up here, hover my mouse over here, and I'm going to press T on the keyboard, which draws a tangent line. And now you can see that I've got this line coming off perpendicular to it at that right angle. And you can see just how easy it is using snap options to start drawing some precise drawings. Now I'm going to hit space on the keyboard 
and I'm just going to have a look at creating some midpoints. So if I hold my mouse over the corner here and then hold my mouse over this corner, you'll notice in the midpoint the cursor changes and I can click there. I can do the same with the bottom here and here. And then I can go around and click on these midpoints to start creating a shape. I'm just going to exit the tool for a moment with right click. I'm just going to move this star out of the way. And then we can have a look at joining up our rectangle. We'll go back into our tool. So again, hover over that mouse point. So if I click here, hover over that corner point, hover over this corner point, get our midpoint, pop over to our line over here, and now you can see how that's joined up our rectangle for us, and we did it using those midpoints. So you can see how precise and accurate you can get with the snap options, and that covers how to use the snapping options in the software.